I can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case is solved. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. Yaron Vandersloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. It's been a very long and painful journey, but we finally got the answers we've been searching for for all these years. We finally, today, we got justice for Natalie. He is a killer. He will always be the killer. He will always be now the black mark in Aruba. Closure for Beth Holloway just days after Huron Vandersloot pleaded guilty to extortion charges in the Natalie Holloway case. We are getting new details from Aruba. Vandersloot confessed to killing Holloway in 2005 while she was on the island during a class graduation trip. According to CNN, prosecutors in Aruba have asked the U.S. Department of Justice to send them their Vandersloot investigation records. Local prosecutors want to review the files before deciding on possible next steps. Now, we know that there's a 12-year statute of limitations for murder in Aruba, but the local prosecutor isn't closing the door on possible charges for Vandersloot. The local prosecutors say Holloway's case remains an open investigation in Aruba. On Wednesday, Vandersloot appeared inside an Alabama federal courtroom to plead guilty to the extortion charges. As part of that plea, he agreed to disclose what happened to Holloway, saying that he killed her on a beach after she refused his sexual advances. Um, and uh, she needs me, uh, she ends up kneeing me in the crotch. Uh, when she needs me in the crotch, uh, I get up, uh, on the beach and I kick her ex extremely hard in, in the face. Um, yeah, she's laying down uh, unconscious, possibly even uh, even dead, but definitely unconscious. And uh, I see uh, right next to her, there's a, there's a huge uh, cinder block laying on the beach. And when you say cinder block, uh Looking at the walls of this uh, place, is it like those? The exact same cinder blocks. I see a huge cinder block laying on the on the beach. Uh, I take this and uh, yeah, I, I I smash her head in with it completely. Vandersloot says he then dumped her body in the ocean for Holloway's family. They waited 18 long years to find out what happened on that beach, and this week they finally found out and it brought those long sought answers. This was the goal, to find out what happened, to have you on, uh, let Beth know what happened. There were so many questions before. There was always the, the slimmest hope that Natalie could still be uh, alive and could be somewhere needing us. Uh, I remember several years ago, the three girls were found in, uh, I think it was Ohio, that had been held captive in a house for 13 years. And we always wondered, could that be Natalie? Could she be held somewhere? So today has allowed, this week has allowed my sister to, to rest, to rest from the search, to have confidence in the knowledge of what, what occurred and gives her a chance to, uh, to begin to grieve, to know, uh, what occurred and how it happened. It's clear that Yaron is, uh, I want to say, a sick person. I mean, killing two people uh, brutally is just unbelievable. And it was very hard for my sister and, and our families to hear the words as to what happened. It's uh, difficult to hear, but it was important to hear it so that there is an opportunity to, to rest and, and move forward. Yeah, Vandersloot is already serving 28 years in a Peruvian prison for the 2010 murder of Stephanie Flores in, in very similar way. All right, still with me, family law attorney Randy Kessler and criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Marsha Minot. Um, Randy, I'll start with you. I just want to get your thoughts on this case. I'll tell you, um, Beth is, is okay with it. I mean, she knew the deal that going into this. Uh, she wanted what was most important to her to get closure in this thing. She felt knowing about what happened to her daughter was better than not knowing. And, and so that's great. I'm happy for her. But I got issues with the deal. Um, he's got 20 years for the extortion. Could have gotten 40. Um, he's serving concurrent with the Peruvian prison. Um, apparently he likes it there. He gets conjugal visits with his now wife. He has a wife out there. He has a child. The child can visit as well. 
Um, I don't know, your thoughts overall on the closing of a case that I think we, for what, since 20, I don't, I don't even remember, what is it, 18 years that case was open? Um, finally finding out, or at least what we hope is the truth. Yeah, it's, it's terribly uncomfortable, right? It's been a long time. They wore down the family, and the family just needed something because you can't live like this forever wondering what's going on. So they, he gave them answers. Who knows if it's right? T.J. Ward, the investigator that worked with the family, has doubts about whether that's a true story about what happened. You know, I don't think it, it really, it's hard to say, but it doesn't really matter what happened as long as the parents, as long as the family knows, all right, they got the guy. You know, how he did it, that's horrible, but at least they're not going to wonder, was it this, was it that? You know, I hope this doesn't make it worse. They're thinking about what she went through. They knew it wasn't good. Um, again, I, I agree with you, Michael. If the family's okay with it, who are we not to be okay with it? But gosh, this guy should never have any possibility of freedom, never possibility of, exactly. of conjugal relationships. I mean, he's going to be 58, you know, Randy, when he gets out. 58, that's I mean, young. You right, know, the victim's not me. allowed to get married. The victim can't get married and have children and go on. And why does he have that right? He yeah. took her right to do that. Why does he have the right to do anything? that she can't do. Yeah, he'll be out at 58. That scares me. But I want to talk, uh, Marsha, about this whole thing going on in Aruba because there's maybe some light over there in terms of possible prosecution. We had found out yesterday, or when he said it, two couple days ago, that Aruba had a 12-year statute of limitation on murder. Um, but now it turns out that maybe there's some wiggle room there, that it was an open investigation. Maybe it wasn't told, the statute of limitations. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the possibility that Aruba could find a way around a 12-year statute of limitations? I don't see that being possible. Um, unless he confessed to some other crime in his admission that they can go forward on because the statute related to that crime has not run. But... The, the issue is if Aruba keeps digging, I think they may show that his plea was fraudulently made. Because if they start looking into where the cinder block was, did her body not wash back up on the beach because his confession was that he put her in the water knee deep and there's no way you're gonna put a body in the water knee deep and it not surface back. So I think Aruba needs to probably take this plea and walk away before they dig up something and unearth something that a defense counsel could use for this guy to get off and ruin the entire thing for this family. Yeah, and there's certainly still questions surrounding it. I wonder, how we haven't heard how the family might feel about a possible prosecution, if it's possible, in Aruba. I wonder if they would just be like, look, let's just all move on.